It's been said time and time before that a picture can speak a thousand words, and it's true. Just by looking at one, a photograph can give you a glimpse into things such as major milestones in history to huge disasters around the world. But 9 out of 10 photos are of just regular, seemingly normal situations. But sometimes even those can have incredible backstories and eerie messages behind them, whether that's a childhood photograph of a killer or an unintentional snap of a disaster. Well, here are five seemingly normal photographs where there is a lot more to it than what meets the eye. Tyler Hadley This photograph was taken at the Florida home of Mary Jo and Blake Hadley and shows their 17-year-old son Tyler enjoying a drink whilst posing with his friend for a selfie. Nothing unusual about that until you realise that Tyler had just brutally battered his parents to death with a claw hammer just a few hours earlier and their bodies were still in the house during this photo. After killing them, Tyler posted on Facebook that he was having a house party and that his parents would not be there to stop it. Around 60 guests showed up and they were all unaware of the horror upstairs in one of the bedrooms. When questioned, friends had described Tyler as being in good spirits and he had even planned to hold another party the next night. However, it seems sometime during the party he admitted to a friend that he had killed his parents and even showed him a bloody footprint in the garage before showing him the bodies. As guests became aware of the killings, they told the police and Tyler was arrested and charged with murder. Initially he claimed that he had been beaten and molested by his father, but these claims were proved to be false and it was discovered that Tyler was suffering from some mental problems, as killing his parents then throwing a party was one of his bizarre fantasies that he had even discussed with a friend. After much consideration, in 2014, Tyler Hadley was sentenced to two life sentences with no chance of parole. And because at the time of the murders, he was just 17 years old, he could not be sentenced to death. This photograph was taken in 1971 and shows a happy family posing in front of a pink Cadillac in Falun, Sweden. What you may not know is that this young man, second in on the right, is 14-year-old Sami as he called himself. Real name, Osama bin Mohammed bin Awad bin Laden. Osama was the 17th of 52 children to one of Saudi Arabia's richest and most powerful men and growing up, he was described by one of his teachers as a shy and gracious boy. So what happened that turned him into the once most wanted man on the planet? Well, when Bin Laden was in education, he joined the Islamist Muslim Brotherhood. But Islam became more than just a religion for him, and he was persuaded and mentored by the radical pan-Islamist scholar Abdullah Azam. And with Osama's incredible wealth, the pair formed the terrorist group Al-Qaeda. The group conducted a series of terrorist attacks, most famously the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center, and of course, the September 11th, 2001 attack. After this, Al-Qaeda and Osama became known worldwide, and despite being public enemy number one, he evaded capture for 10 years, until he was finally killed in Abbottabad, Pakistan, on May the 1st, 2011, by the US Navy SEAL Team 6. To add to this photograph, here is another seemingly innocent one that is thought to have been taken at a judo class whilst Bin Laden was a university student in Saudi Arabia. But going back to the photograph taken in 1971, it's incredibly haunting seeing Osama, knowing that in the years to come, he would have a $25 million bounty on his head and be responsible for organizing and funding the murder of thousands of innocent people. Lada 118. Speaking of terrorist attacks and Osama bin Laden, this next photograph shows a fire truck heading across the Brooklyn Bridge towards the World Trade Center on the morning of September the 11th, 2001. It's Ladder 118 and inside are six firefighters, driver Leon Smith, Joey Aniello, Vermont Cherry, Pete Vega, Scott Davidson and Lieutenant Robert Regan. And not long after this photograph was taken, they parked the truck at Western VC and without hesitation, all six ran into the Marriott World Trade Center, a 22-story, 825-room hotel located right next to the Twin Towers. The men are believed to have pried open a door that was trapping many people inside the building since debris from the Twin Towers had fallen on the hotel. And Bobby Graff, a worker at the Marriott, remembers all six of the men helping people evacuate and believes they saved his life as well as hundreds of others who were trapped inside. Bobby says the firefighters had formed a human chain to direct people out, but at 9.58 the South Tower collapsed, followed by the second tower 30 minutes later, and all six of the firefighters of Ladder 118 were killed inside the Marriott Hotel. The rig driver, Leon Smith, has never been found, but the remains of Regan, Agnello, Davidson, Cherry, and Vega were recovered from the buried lobby of the building, and it's believed they all died together, literally side by side. Their fire truck was recovered a few days after the attack, and incredibly, the mangled wreck of steel and glass has since been restored and put back into service. 
The photograph of Ladder 118's crew on their last ever run was displayed in their firehouse and is a permanent reminder of that dreadful day and the bravery of all of the firefighters who lost their lives. Beneath the photo there is a message. There is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. Rest in peace to all of the lives that were lost on that tragic day. Honeymoon Diver Gabe Watson and Tina Thomas met and fell in love while they were students at the University of Alabama at Birmingham in the United States. They planned to marry in 2003 and Watson encouraged his wife to take diving lessons shortly before as he had planned a scuba trip in the Great Barrier Reef for their honeymoon. On the 22nd of October, just 11 days after their wedding, this photograph was taken by fellow diver Gary Stempler who was taking a photo of his wife during a dive in Queensland, Australia. During his trip, Gabe and Tina were also diving and on the right hand side of the photo you can see 26 year old Tina lying on the bottom of the ocean and another diver on the left swimming to rescue her. At this point, Gabe had resurfaced and shouted, I've lost my wife. It's believed Gabe had turned off Tina's air supply and held her until she passed out, then turned the air back on and let her sink before swimming to the surface. This corresponded with the other divers seeing Gabe bear hugging his wife before the incident. After Tina's funeral, Gabe had her body exhumed and moved to a different site after claims her grave was being repeatedly vandalised. However, it was proved that it was him doing the vandalism after he was caught on CCTV. This combined with him changing his story 16 times, trying to seek large amounts of compensation and increasing Tina's life insurance policy before her death, suggested that he was responsible. And despite denying murdering his wife, he was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to four and a half years in prison. He served one year in Australia before returning to America, where a separate trial for murder was thrown in Alabama in 2012, and Gabe was released due to a lack of evidence. This next photograph shows a smiling Chris McCandless posing in the environment he loved, and is the very last known photo of him before his death in 1992 that was found on his camera. Chris was an adventurer and had a different perspective on life, and although he was intelligent and academically brilliant, he was troubled by his home life. After graduating from Emory University with a bachelor's degree, he gave nearly all of his savings to charity, and with his beat-up Datsun car, he embarked on a life of travelling his way through the United States. When his car finally gave up, he abandoned it and carried on by foot, eventually hitchhiking his way to Alaska. Whilst there, he was last seen alive by electrician Jim Galleon, who gave him a lift to the head of the Stampede Trail. Jim was a little concerned that Chris was not well enough equipped to tackle the route, but Chris was determined to go ahead with it and wanted to be self-sufficient. After hiking for several miles in the snow, McCandless spotted an abandoned bus and set up camp inside. Three months later and still camping in the bus, Chris was struggling to find food and was extremely malnourished. He made the decision to return back to civilization, but his journey back was blocked by the raised water levels of the Teklanika River. So he returned to the bus and posted this on the door. Attention possible visitors, SOS, I need your help. I am injured, near death and too weak to hike out. I am all alone, this is no joke. In the name of God, please remain to save me. I am out collecting berries close by and shall return this evening. Thank you, Chris McCandless. On September the 6th, 1992, a hunter looking for shelter stumbled upon the bus and discovered a lump in a sleeping bag. He radioed for help and police uncovered the decomposing body of Chris. Now, there has always been speculation about his exact cause of death, but it seems likely that it was starvation. The sad thing is that if he would have had a map of the area, he would have seen that there was a hand-operated tram nearby that would have enabled him to cross the river to safety. During Chris's battle for survival, he jotted down his thoughts in a journal and his last entry on day 107 read Beautiful Berries and the next six days were marked with just slashes. So that's five seemingly normal photographs with haunting stories that goes to show a picture can speak much more than a thousand words. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week for a super interesting video on time travel.